Today on The Hookup, we're gonna automate some curtains. I'm gonna show you an off-the-shelf solution and a DIY solution, and then I'm gonna help you figure out which one is the best for you. A few weeks ago, in my house tour, I mentioned that my bedroom is mostly free of smart products, but that my wife's most requested project has been for me to automate the curtains. I'd been working on a DIY solution, but after I posted that video, the great people over at ZemiSmart offered to send me one of their Wi-Fi motorized curtain tracks to review. But The Hookup is more than just a product review channel, so I decided to take on two projects at once. In the bedroom, I installed the ZemiSmart curtains, and then downstairs, I built, coded, and installed a DIY solution. In this video, I'm going to address the pros and cons of each system and help you decide whether it's better to buy or DIY. Before we start, let's see each of them in action, starting with the Zemi Smart Curtains. And here's my DIY solution. I'm gonna split up this comparison into five categories, and then I'm gonna pick an overall winner. The first comparison category is going to be ease of setup. The Zemi Smart Kit is extremely well made. There's a motor unit that mounts behind the curtains, a Wi-Fi switch for opening and closing, and all the hardware you need, including an extruded aluminum curtain rail that can fit a ton of custom sizes without having to cut it. The install process is pretty simple and only requires a screwdriver and a pair of scissors. Overall, it took me about two hours to get everything installed, but it would have been much faster than that if I wasn't such an idiot. One part of the instructions clearly stated to leave 10 centimeters of clearance on each side of the rail. And my stupid American brain immediately went, hmm, 10 centimeters, that's like half an inch. Long story short, I had to take apart the whole curtain rail, shorten it, and then completely reassemble. After plugging in the curtains, I paired them with the Tuya app, and then I was immediately able to control them with the app, with Amazon Echo, and with Home Assistant. The DIY setup was significantly more involved. Since I have these rail and grommet sized curtains, I needed to sew the individual pleats into the curtains so that they would spread out the correct distance. Then, since these weren't pull cord style curtains, I also needed to install pulleys and a curtain cord to be able to open and close them in a more standard fashion. Then I used a stepper motor, an extruder gear from a 3D printer, a rubberized bearing, and a 3D printed bracket to motorize the pulley system. If the two options I was presenting to you were buying the Zemi Smart Curtains or designing your own automated curtain solution from scratch, it would be the easiest recommendation ever. I went through about 20 different iterations of this system before I got to its current state, and there are still many improvements to be made. Luckily, you don't have to choose between these options. You just need to choose between my solution, which I've already made for you, and Zemi Smarts. Still in the ease of installation department, I'm gonna give a resounding win to the Zemi Smart Curtains. They've got a super high build quality and the instructions are easy to follow. The second category is aesthetics. And I'll fully admit that the aesthetics category isn't going to be fair because the Zemi Smart curtains are designed to be used with pinch pleat style curtains, but I already own grommet style curtains. To convert them, I purchased some of these curtain hooks. And ideally, these hooks would be installed about six inches from the top of the curtains and then they would hide the curtain rail behind them. You can also fold back the grommets to accomplish a more finished look. But I didn't want to give up any overall height in my curtains, so I left the grommets there and I put the hooks at the very top. I'm planning on putting a wooden valence at the top to hide the grommets and the rail. The valence will also give me a great place to install some RGBW LEDs and hide the wires that I'll need to automate the blinds later on. The motor on the Zemi Smart solution is mostly hidden by the curtains themselves and the drive belt is located inside the rail, so you can't deduct any points for that. On my DIY solution, the motor and controller are also hidden behind the blinds, but the curtain string and the pulleys can be seen when the curtains are open. This is a super minor thing, but I'll deduct a couple of points for it. My largest gripe with the Zemi Smart curtains is when the curtains are closed, they don't have the same satisfying uniformity in pleat size that they used to when the curtains were installed using the grommets. Again, I know this is unfair because I'm not using the right type of curtains. 
In my DIY solution, the pleats are extremely uniform, and that's because they have to be. As I mentioned before, one of the main hurdles I needed to overcome when designing a DIY solution was the fact that on the grommet style curtains, the pleats will naturally overextend as you pull them, causing them to bind up on the curtain rod and making them impossible to open. To counteract this, I got out my needle and thread and I manually sewed each pleat to a maximum size. This was pretty tedious, so take some points away from ease of installation, but the end result looks great every time. In the aesthetics category, I'm going to give a narrow edge to my DIY solution. And again, yes, I know this wasn't a fair category. The third category is control. The Zemi Smart Curtain set up in just a few minutes. You install the Tuya app on your phone, connect to the Wi-Fi AP that the switch broadcasts, and then you're done. Want Google Home or Echo Control? Just install the Tuya skill. Want to control it via Home Assistant? Use the Tuya integration. There's a reason Tuya was ubiquitous at CES. It's super easy and it just works. Now, I won't be sticking with Tuya because I'm a bit of an anti-cloud crazy person, but I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to control these curtains yet. The good news is that all the magic that controls how far the curtains open and close is actually located in the curtain motor, not the switch, so I'm free to explore other options. I wasn't immediately able to flash Tasmoda on the included switch because the TX pin is tied to another chip that messes with the serial connection during the flash process. Maybe this will be a good candidate for the new Tuya OTA method that's coming out. My DIY option has local control MQTT, which is great, but it means that if you don't have an MQTT enabled home automation hub like Home Assistant or OpenHAB, you're going to have a tough time controlling them. That being said, I do have them working with Echo, and they even support percent-based commands, though I can't immediately think of a situation where I'd want to close my curtains only halfway. If you're familiar with the Arduino IDE, getting my program onto the ESP8266 is pretty simple, and setting up your curtains for your specific windows just involves sending values via MQTT to the shade position topic until your curtains are fully closed, and then you input that value into the user configuration section in the Arduino program. Just like my Holiday Lights 2.0 sketch, you shouldn't need to edit anything outside of the user configuration section. If you're against using the cloud, the DIY solution might have an edge here. But if you're looking for a smart control that sets up quickly and easily, the Zemi Smart is certainly the way to go. The fourth category is speed and noise. The bedroom curtains are double the size of the patio curtains, but since they open from both sides, we can actually directly compare the time it takes to open them. Oddly enough, they both go the exact same speed and they both take exactly 15 seconds to open. But the problem is that the DIY solution is pretty noisy. I could make it quieter if I just ran a full open and close commands, but then you wouldn't have the option to stop the curtains midway through the move if they got caught or something else was wrong. In my code, it registers every full rotation, and then it checks MQTT to see if a new message is coming in. But the issue with that is that it causes a few microseconds of pause in the rotation, which results in an audible click. I'll hopefully figure out a fix for this in the future, but as of publishing this video, it's still an issue. In contrast, the Zemi Smart Curtain motor is super silent. The only sound you can hear when you open the curtains is the sound of the actual curtain rollers themselves. The motor makes no noise that I can tell. Zemi Smart is the clear winner in the noise category. And the fifth category, and maybe the most important, is price. As I mentioned, Zemi Smart sent me these curtains for free, but the 5.2 meter version that I used only costs $220 US on the official Zemi Smart AliExpress site. My DIY solution cost me about $85, not counting all the parts that I bought but didn't end up using. Some of the parts I had to buy multi packs of, so you could decrease the price per curtain if you were making more than one of these. But I should also note that I already had a curtain rod, and the Zemi Smart does come with a rod. So when you consider the fact that a non-motorized curtain rod of the same size would set you back an additional $95, you're really only saving about $40 bucks going with the DIY solution. So which curtains should you get? If you already have an existing curtain set, especially if that curtain set already has a pull cord, or if you absolutely love grommet style curtains, then my DIY solution does make sense. But if you're buying all new hardware, you should get the Zemi Smart Curtains 100% of the time. They're affordably priced, easy to install, quieter, and even though I haven't experienced any issues with either of my curtains at this point, at the end of the day, the Zemi Smart Curtains are probably more reliable too. If you're looking for a fun project and you want to make the DIY curtains, I've included all the links to the parts that I used for my DIY setup and a link to the GitHub page down in the description. 
If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you must have liked it. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button so this video will show up in the suggested video section for other makers and home automation enthusiasts. Thank you to all of my wonderful patrons over at Patreon for your continued support. If you're interested in supporting my channel, check out the links at the bottom of the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup. Thank you.